Here's my original clip, just this lady on a black background. And if I scrub through it, you can see she gets tossed a water bottle. She kind of bends down, her head goes down, and then back up, and she drinks from it. Um, and the outcome, the kind of completed version, is this, where we're zoomed in on a part of her, in this case, her head. And if I play this back, you can see her head almost stays centered in the screen and instead of her moving down to catch that bottle and drink from it her head stays centered there so i believe that's the effect that you're trying to create at least that i saw in that tutorial so the way you would do it here in motion i'm going to start from scratch i'm just going to take that clip uh, off of my desktop and drag it into the layers here to create a new layer notice it's group two the clip is just called Water 1, and it places it here on the timeline. Uh, the biggest thing about this is you're, you want your clip to be a high resolution because you are going to be zooming into it. Um, so the, the lower resolution it is, or the more you have to zoom in, the lower quality it's going to be. Now when you drag something into motion, it places it wherever your playhead is, which in this case was further down on the timeline. So I'm just going to click and drag that back to the left so that clip starts at the beginning of the project. Uh, by default, Motion makes projects 10 seconds long, which I'm fine with that, but if you need to change the length, just click on this little clock. It'll show you the total duration. Maybe I need this to be 11 seconds. I can type in 11 period, which adds two zeros, and then hit return. And now the, the total length of the project is 11 seconds, and you can uh, drag your out point all the way out to 11 seconds if you need to. I like the Shift Z shortcut always to fit into frame. Um, and then, yeah, that's the first step is to add your clip. With the clip added, we're going to go up to the Add Behaviors menu. You can also search through the library on the left side, but I prefer the uh, Behaviors drop down menu here. And we're going to go down to Motion Tracking. And then there's an option that says Stabilize. So we're going to add the Stabilize Behavior to this water clip. I'm gonna select Stabilize, click on the inspector on the left side, and I'm gonna add a tracker. You don't need to make any other changes here, just click Add for the tracker. When you do that, it places the tracker directly in the middle of your clip, and what we need to do is drag this to the portion of the clip that we want to track. In this case, I do wanna track her face, so this clip's a little bit off. I'm gonna click on the clip, and then just click and drag it down. Notice as I'm dragging it, the tracker is going to also move down. So I'm going to go back to stabilize. I'm going to select my tracker here. My tracker is down at the bottom. So if I scroll down, notice here's my tracker. I can move this up. And I'm just scrolling with my finger. And um, you're going to have to figure out what in your clip is a good source to track. Uh, this can vary. This is why you might see people with suits and they have these weird colored uh, stickers on them that's what's used for tracking for this specific clip I actually found that her eyebrow is a pretty good source for um, tracking so I'm gonna set that tracking point right where I think works well and then what I'm gonna do is go and click the analyze button inside of the inspector so again so far what we've done is added the clip We've zoomed into the clip or repositioned it as needed. We've added the stabilize behavior. And then we added a tracking point or a tracker to somewhere on the clip, in this case, her eyebrow. With it added, we then click the analyze movement button inside of the behaviors inspector. This process especially if you have a longer clip, this is gonna take some time. So you just have to let this roll. If at any point it stops because it can't continue the tracking, then you're gonna to have to go back, maybe remove that tracker, add a new one, and try tracking from a different location. Uh, there's also in the inspector here some options for this tracker. Uh, for example, the auto zoom, the auto zoom mode, and the look ahead frames those are all options you might need to adjust depending on how your clip is uh, to make that tracking work a little bit better um, 
But yeah, that's kind of the setup here. Uh, I guess the only other thing to mention while we're waiting for this track to, to finish is the effect that you sent me that's being done there, the way that that works is the background is mostly still and the subject is what's moving. Uh, in the example that he used in that demo, uh, some of it doesn't work as well because the background is moving. So uh, that's something to consider. With this shot here with where she's drinking this uh, bottle of water, uh, it's on a tripod and the background is completely stable because the shot's on a, tr on a background, on a, uh, because the camera's on a tripod, the background stays completely stable as she moves. So that's why this shot works really well for this effect. So just keep that in mind. If you have a handheld shot where you're running uh, next to someone, it's not going to work as well, but uh, for this shot, it should it should work pretty well. So once the tracking has completed, then it's time to position the clip where you want it to be as far as the frame goes. So um, you can play it back. You might have to scale it up if you see black edges, if you see the edge of your video and it just is black or nothing after that. Uh, you'll have to readjust it as needed. So uh, yeah, so it's done here. So if I go back and scrub through this, uh, you can see our trackers there. Notice right here, uh, let me turn off under view. I'm going to turn off all my overlays. Notice this black area on the right here. This is what I was talking about. Uh, this is actually nothing. This is the edge of the video that's being repositioned because we have our tracker in there. So we do need to take care of that. We need to get rid of that. And to do that, I'm going to click on the name of the group that I put this clip in. So the clip is water one and it's in group two. I'm going to select group two. I'm going to go over here to the scale and just scale this up so that it covers up that empty space that was on the right side. Uh, in motion here, just like in Final Cut, you can do Shift Z to fit our frame. And we can also use Command minus to zoom out. That way you can see the, the full edge of the clip there. And I'll just scrub through this. And I can see the top of her head's kind of cut off. So I might reposition it so that she's placed better into the frame there. I'm going to go back to view overlays. Here are my overlays. I might actually want her nose somewhat centered here. Uh, and that looks pretty good. If I scrub through the whole thing, I notice it doesn't get to the edge. We should be good. So I'm going to do Shift Z again to fit it in the frame. I'm going to hit the space bar to play it. And now notice she's going to bend over to pick it up. But the entire time, her face stays almost centered in the frame there because of that tracker. Play it one more time uh, for you here. Bends over and notice her eyes are staying there instead of what we saw in the original clip, which is where uh, she was, let's play the original clip here, where she bends over. You don't even see that she's bending over anymore because of the tracker on there. So again, to summarize, to make this effect happen, add your clip to motion, add a stabilize effect on it or behavior, which you can go up to the behaviors menu, motion tracking, stabilize. After you've added the stabilize, click add in the inspector under behaviors for, to add a tracker. And then with that tracker added, you're going to go into the viewer here, find that tracker, and put it onto a spot in the clip that you want to track. In this case, my example, I tracked her eyebrow, but you want to look for an area of contrast that you can track, and then hit Analyze Movement. After the movement's been analyzed, click on the group and use the position, scale, even rotation if you want to, to adjust the frame, and then you've created your video. Once it's created, the last app step is to go up to the share menu and export that movie out of motion. This is all very identical to what Final Cut looks like, but you can export it, choose your settings, save it, and then import that into Final Cut.